Hello and welcome into another edition of the Scorching Star on the Birds Broadcast Network. I'm your host, Sammy Miller, alongside your broadcasters, Ian Nicholas and Dylan Pescatore. And the Firebirds are back home at Eldridge Park after last night's big 11-7 victory over the Harbor Hawks. And today is another big day. It's against an East Division foe, the Harwich Mariners. Before we talk about today's game, let's talk about last night. The Firebirds offense was firing from all cylinders, especially with their RBIs. They had seven RBIs, five from Colin Tuff, one from Fenwick Trimble, one from Jack Penny. Ian, how important is it is this, when this team is playing some serious team baseball? Well, I know you just talked to Owen Carpolati, and he said it's just easier to play for the other guy and to move the other guy over when you like playing with this group. This is a group assembled by Kelly Nicholson that always has good character and always plays good team baseball. And this year, you've got a position group that stayed for the most part the same. I mean, I know Colin Tuff was a midseason addition, but somebody else who's been really good and drove in another run last night, Eddie King Jr., He's been here since day one, and he's had so many RBIs in the month of July after not having a single one in June. It's a learning process for these guys. A lot of them are peaking at the right time. Yes, we know Joe Oyama, Matt Hallback, and Jack Penny are always going to get theirs, but one through nine, this lineup is really starting to find its groove, hitting over 300 in the last week. Another player who is peaking at just the right time is the University of San Diego's pitcher, Ivan Romero. Last night, he went six innings and did not allow a single run, along with five Ks. What made him so effective last night? Yes, yeah, Sammy, I think Ivan's fastball is what commands everything in his repertoire. When his fastball is landing for strikes and landing at 89, 90, 91 in the strike zone, it lets his other pitches really work better. He was getting a lot of swing and miss off of the slider in the dirt, along with the curveball and the changeup. The four-pitch mix from Romero was was really good last night and his probably his best start his best start confirmed for the Firebirds going into the playoffs that'll give him a lot of confidence. Now even, even though the Firebirds were able to get it done last night they did give up six runs in the ninth inning so how important is it for this team to really close out when the time comes? Well this pitching staff is so good and a big reason why they've been phenomenal this year second lowest ERA in the league is because anybody who's on the mound new or old has trusted the defense. In the middle of the infield last night, didn't really help out Colton Sundloff. And that's, I think, a blip on the radar, right? I don't think Jack Penny, who's sliding over from third base to shortstop as of late, has just forgotten how to play defense. He is very good. He was an all-star starter at third base, not because just of his bat, but also because of his defense. And Joe Oyama has been very solid at second base all year long. So I think that duo is going to be just fine. I don't think the pitchers on his team have lost any faith in those two. It's just an inning that you want to wipe away if you're the middle of the infield, really the entirety of the infield, they're going to have the back of this pitching staff the rest of the way. And today is a happy day, but it's also a sad day because it's Derek Clark having the start on the mound for the Firebirds, but it's also his last start of the season. Derek Clark has the third best ERA in the entire league, but other than that, he is one of the best leaders on this squad, and it, he really embodies what it means to be a Firebird. What has made him so effective this season? Well, if we're talking baseball, number one, his fastball has a lot of ride on it, along with the curveball and the slider for Clark. He's been absolutely incredible on the mound, but if we're talking in the dugout, we're talking in the locker room and even on off days he's made friends with everybody he told me that he goes up to every guy new or old if they come in their first day to make friends with them to make sure they're comfortable in this locker room and on this team that's so important it goes along with team chemistry it's going to be sad that Derek Clark won't be here for the playoff run but through the 44 game regular season he has been a charm to cover to be with and to be in that locker room really has been incredible watching him grow and develop this summer. And the last time the Mariners and the Firebirds faced off against each other, the Firebirds won 12 to 0. It was so close to being a no hitter. But Ian, how much do you think it's going to help them with their momentum coming into today's game? I think it's big because first of all, you took down Harwich at White House Field, something you hadn't done throughout this season. The Mariners were 4-0 headed into that previous matchup. Also 2-0 here from Eldridge, where early on in the year, the Mariners just slapped Firebirds around silly. Orleans has not forgotten that. These position players have not forgotten that. And I think this pitching staff hasn't forgotten it as well. Nearly threw a no-hitter in that game. Ivan Romero was great in a couple of really good bullpen options too. So I just think you understand where you're at in the East Division, right? You're a game and a half back of YD. You still have an opportunity to overtake the Red Sox, and you need a win tonight to stay in that possibility, in that realm of possibility. So the guys know how big this game is. 
and the Mariners, they've lost some pretty good hitters and also pitchers as well. What are their current strengths and weaknesses? Well, talking about their losses, Sammy, thank goodness they've lost a few of their hitters because they've been really good against the Firebirds. Kennedy Jones, Lorenzo Carey, or Keelan Culpepper, Seaver King, all four of those were leading the offense against the Birds in those first four games that they dropped. But according to right now, they have a player in Elijah Lambros out of Maryland who's been really good for this team. A replacement, he wasn't here on day one, but he leads this offense for Harwich, along with Brian Arndt, their catcher. He's been a killer of the Firebirds, too, with four hits in his in his 15 plate appearances against Orleans. Watch out for those two tonight against Derek Clark on the mound. And, guys, you already know what time it is. I need keys to the game. Ian, you're up first. I need a last yesterday's player of the game, Eddie King Jr., who's been sensational to deliver once again because in the heart of this order, he keeps this thing turning. He needs to have multiple hits, and I think he will because it's just been that kind of week for him. You might need a crown for him. He's really embodying what it means to be a king. What's your key, Dylan? Mine is the last dance. Derek Clark's last dance is today. Six, maybe even seven innings like he did against Brewster. A good start for Derek Clark to send him off into the sunset and then over to Morgantown in West Virginia. There we go. I know there's going to be a lot of new West Virginia fans after this summer for Derek. But stay tuned for a lot more content on the Scorching Start. All right, let's go to war, boys. You guys keep it out. I'm now joined alongside Tulane's Colin Tuff. Colin, you had a fantastic night last night. Five RBIs. How are you feeling at the plate? I feel good. I feel good. It's pretty much all to it. And how does it feel just getting those runners in and seeing them celebrate with the guys and knowing that you were able to pass the baton along that Kelly Nicholson always says? Yeah, well, that's everything in baseball. Like, you want to see your teammates have fun. You want to see them thrive. You want to see them score and enjoy the time with their teammates. Um, Honestly, it's like that's what I play for, honestly, like seeing all my teammates be happy. So it was really nice to see that. In the ninth inning, things got a little shaky, but you had that incredible throw to get the final out. What would you see on that play? Well, it was, just, it, was a hit, it was a ball hit right towards me. Uh, I saw an opportunity to make a play for the team, uh, get us off the field, hopefully. Uh, I was just thinking getting it through the shortstop, make a head-high throw. It sailed on me a little bit, but ended up working out well. But that's why you have that target of head-high, straight through the cut. Um, and Hunter, or Henry, was able to get it and tag him out, which was an incredible tag, underrated tag. That was a really good play by him. So it was, it was cool. It was cool. But I'm really happy that we got the win because of, like, the entire complete game. So. And do you think it helps you because you are a catcher as well, knowing what throws to make to the catcher so that Henry could make a play like that? Yeah, I think potentially that could help a lot. Um, personally, like, I don't know. It's just, like, I just see the ball. I, still, <laughs> I throw the ball. Like, I don't, th I don't think it's that deep. But, um yeah. And how big of a win was it against a Harbor Hawks team who's had a lot of success this season as well as you guys? It was it was a really nice win. I mean, like, all the guys enjoyed it. I know we played really well as a team. We scored 11 runs. Everyone was – Eddie King had an amazing day. Eddie Micheletti hit a double. Joe was unreal again, like always. <laughs> uh, like, the entire team did really well. It was a great win for the entire team. We feel great. We're excited to go into this next game against Harwich. I know you guys always love to say birds are hot, birds are hot, Colin Tuff, are the birds hot? Birds are always hot. Birds are always hot. Thank you so much. Good luck tonight. Hey, set the tone, boys. I'm now joined alongside Firebirds manager Kelly Nicholson. A huge win last night. Ivan Romero had a fantastic night, and he said after the game that he had a big boost of confidence. How big is that for him for the regular season and as well as the playoffs as well? Yeah, it's big. We thought Ivan threw the ball. Ivan threw the ball really well. He's going to be our game two starter on Saturday. We'll be on the road, uh, I think, maybe. Um, yeah, we'll be on the road for sure if we finish second or first. Uh, you know, he's a veteran. He's pitched in the Cape League playoffs before. He pitched against us last summer when he was with YD, and he threw the ball really well. So, uh, he th yeah, that was a good lineup last night in Hyannis, and he he kind of dominated those guys. It was, it was good to see. And your batting order was fantastic. Seven RBIs on the night. How important is it to really pass that baton and play some team baseball? Yeah, it's contagious, like I've told you before, Sammy. When those guys start swinging the bat, the next guy starts swinging the bat, and then the next guy starts swinging the bat, next thing you know, you got to – crooked number in the inning so yeah they're they're playing well right now they they played well for eight innings that last inning got a little little sloppy uh, but i'm really encouraged with where our ball club is right now it's a bittersweet night because Derek clark it's gonna be his last start of the summer what does he mean to this team well he's our ace right he's you know you know what you you kind of know what you're going to get when he goes out of the mound he's going to compete he should throw strikes um you know hopefully they're He's going to limit them and hits and runs and give your team a good chance to win. So 
he's going to go 80, 85 pitches tonight, and we're going to go get him. And then, you know, we have hopefully we have Matson ready to go tonight. And, um, you know, we anytime Derek Clark's on the mound, we like our chances. And the last time you faced the Mariners was a big 12-0 victory. How big is that for the momentum coming into today? Well, momentum always is, you know, your starting pitcher for that day. <laughs> uh, yesterday's not, you know, it, or last time we played him doesn't have a whole lot to do with Today's game, uh, it's how we play to, it's how we play today, it's how we pitch, it's how we run the bases, it's how we play D and um, you know, put the ball in play. So hopefully we can do that better than the Mariners tonight. There we go. Thank you so much and good luck tonight, coach. All right, thank you, Sammy. That'll do it for this edition of the Scorching Start on the Birds Broadcast Network. Make sure you tune in at 6:30 when the Orleans Firebirds take on the Harwich Mariners.